Now we've been talking about how ecosystems deal with disturbances and that fact is that ecosystems will try to stay as stable as possible but as the environment changes it has to cope with that and we talked about the fact that at the organism level and at the ecosystem level the greater number di biodiversity exists the better they are going to be at coping with changes at the organism level that increases the tolerance through making uh, expanding the uh, the fundamental niche of the animal or what it can actually deal with which actually makes the animal more susceptible to changes and more likely to survive the evolutionary process meanwhile on the ecosystem level the biodiversity will maintain the strength of the ecosystem or which is called its ascendancy and makes it more likely to adapt and come back from massive disturbances speaking of disturbances there are three main kinds of disturbances some disturbances are violent terrible disturbances which either are come very often are very strong or last too long those disturbances are likely to have detrimental effects on the ecosystem in the in the short run Likewise, there are some disturbances which are very low intensity and they very rarely happen or they don't last very long and these disturbances may not be as intense. And then there's disturbances in the middle which are intermediate. Now you may ask yourself which one of these are more likely to, to damage the ecosystem or to help it? Because remember, disturbances are actually a good thing. It's what actually powers the evolutionary process because as the environment changes, it forces uh, the animals to adapt to that across generations through the evolutionary process because it's ultimately disturbances that provide the environmental pressure where mutations which where random mutations which provide advantages create new looks in the populations and therefore also new environmental communities so you may ask yourself then what is the best situation too much pressure less pressure or intermediate pressure well if you have too much pressure what is going to happen is that only the species which are extremely tolerant to change are going to survive. Like humans, for example, we can live almost everywhere on Earth, and where we can't live, we have technology to deal with it. So that means that when the environment changes a lot, these species are going to be the only ones which are more likely to survive compared to others. Meanwhile, if the environment doesn't change too much, there's barely any pressure. That means that all the animals can kind of like try to make it. There's going to be more competition. But then, when there's more competition, the species which are stronger will tend to outcompete the less uh, fortunate species, and then also that's going to end up lowering the numbers of species which are in the ecosystem. So, if you want to increase diversity, the best way to do it is to have intermediate disturbances where you change in the environment, but not too drastically or not too little, so that there is less competition, and that allows more species to kind of make it and fill in different niches as the environment evolves together with the living things in it. So this though presents the, a picture that evolution works faster if there's moderate disturbances. However, there is something to say about the other kinds of disturbances as well. Low disturbances with that increased competition will sometimes create environmental patches. And by that I mean like instead of creating a one very biodiverse ecosystem, it will create these little communities separate from each other where each type of life is making it. So maybe it, it, they won't all make it at once in one big ecosystem, but they will create smaller communities. And there's something to be said about the value of that. Although remember, larger united ecosystems have a larger chance to survive in the long run. But those little communities are an opportunity for less viable species to evolve and still stay around rather than they would in a, in a bigger ecosystem where they would be outcomputed. On high disturbances, you will have the other end of the spectrum. You have things like succession. High disturbances are important because it, they actually are the process that changes the ecosystems completely and re reboots life and it creates new kinds of life as a part of it. And we'll talk about that in the next video when we describe the idea of succession. All right, I'll see you guys then.